Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Jamila Davis, Aisha Hall, Ayana Bean, and Delranda Hood. Yeah. Why did you do that accent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sound like, sound like Delranda. Delranda. <laughs> and I refuse to call y'all the trap queens because that's not who y'all are. That's just to show y'all. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Now, now let's start with Jamila Davis. Now um, you guys are on a new show. Of course, you just said trap queens. Now what is your story? American for people that don't gangster. Know? Um, so basically, I was convicted for bank fraud. I was sentenced to 12 and a half years in federal prison, and I used to do the credit back in the days, get people their cars and stuff like that, and homes, and that landed me a crazy sentence. And the crazy part is it back, day, I, back then, I probably spent, because it was expensive back then, mm -hmm. like a couple grand to get your credit fixed, and yes. I definitely gave somebody on Linden Boulevard <laughs> some bread. Don't do that to me, Don't Listen, do that. I already told you, Mila, I'm not going to name no names, but somebody <laughs> definitely got a car from her and had that sent in my name, with my well, his name to my address, and they was calling me every morning because they defaulted on that loan. I'm just saying, you know, we, you know, we both from Queens, and I gave, <laughs> I gave somebody yeah. some money. She touched a lot of people. So you got locked up for doing the right thing, for basically helping people? Nah, I got you locked, locked up, up for yeah. right. being the Robin Hood of the hood, for yeah. instance. Take so, from the rich to give back to the poor. Yeah, basically showing people ways to move around the system to get the things that they want, and mm -hmm. that got me jammed up because I didn't do it the right way. Now, and also, this... once people couldn't make those payments, like you could get into a car, you could get into a home, but if they can't make the payments after that, they're going to take it back, right? Now, yeah. Well, what did you do with real estate? They said you own a bunch of homes or you was, you was scamming some <laughs> and people. And we're about to try this now. I'm just kidding. 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 Everybody starts somewhere, John. Okay. So I had, um, I had about 12 properties between Alpine and Saddle River. Um, For everybody that, that, New that, that lives out Jamila's of New Jersey. Jamila's been here before, New by the way, too. I know, I wasn't oh, yes. she was here, but, uh, you right. know, but uh, that's the most expensive areas in New Jersey. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I was bringing rappers and ball players over to Alpine. This was before everybody got there. So mm -hmm. before Diddy got there, before Mary got there, Jamila was there. Right. And I was just basically enlightening my people to a better lifestyle, a better way Which of life. Which is great, but, but, but where's the but? <laughs> however, <laughs> however, we're not going to do but. <laughs> but we'll do however. <laughs> however, I did it the wrong way. So right. the key to the, the moral to the story is shortcuts will lead you to the long, wrong route. Had I taken my time and show people how to do things the right way, then there would have been some longevity. Well, imagine, cause what's the white way to do it? Because I mean, there's got to be well, right way. Right same, way. same difference. <laughs> but there's got to be a way that the white people are doing it that they're not getting locked up for it. Nah, be. It's, it's real. I mean, it's just programs. So when you have when you learn banking, you have to find the right programs that match people so that you don't commit fraud. So if you could fully disclose to them like this is what it is and they accept it on the terms that it's supposed to be. They can't. Gr they can't grab you. So I later learned that there are programs like stated income, mm -hmm. and there are programs for people who make a lot of money and can't necessarily show it. So there was other ways to properly structure deals, but I didn't know. So I was a chick from the hood that figured out a couple things, and I threw a couple things up against the wall, and it stuck. So but what's interesting is that you actually, at first, when you was doing everything with the cars, you only got what probation. Yes. So, but then after that, that little slap on the wrist, <laughs> you said, "Okay, Angela, we you, yeah, you, you, you giving it to." <laughs> Me. But yeah, I thought basically now <laughs> let me reroute, let me try to do this another way, and I got jammed up. So yeah, you're right. So does the slap still, on the wrist wasn't really enough. Does that still work today? Because now, Envy, tell me how this works, right? Mm -hmm. You get somebody to appraise a house mm -hmm. for more than what it's worth, <laughs> and then you get that check cut mm -hmm. for what you get the mortgage for what it was appraised for. Well, Jamila and them effed up the game. I don't know if you ever. So know what? Now because, this doesn't work. Because, because of Jamila and them, now <laughs> it doesn't even matter because the bank actually has to send out their own appraiser so it's uh, nothing that you can do anyway so it, like when I get my house appraised the bank sends out their own uh, appraiser a lot of the times okay but let me help you though no, so no you're not helping me Jamila. my property <laughs> is actually appraised Jamila, for the you're not helping me hold on one second but hold on hold on let's just be fair here uh -oh. the okay. properties that I got did really appraise for the amount I got like short sales and I got people who were in distress so there were properties that actually appraised right. it wasn't that I fudged the appraisals I fudged the income so uh -huh. the properties were actually worth what they were worth Okay, got it. 
Thank All right. Listen, but listen, she's listen. the reason why banks go over and beyond okay. to make sure. Don't blame it all on her. Jamel is not the sole no, no, reason. No, 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 no. I'm no, no, no. the reason Lehman Brothers crashed down too because that's what they wrote the article about right. in mm-hmm. Forbes and said that I was. So I get no. it. You know, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the fall. You know, for that. But let's talk about today. Today I'm not committing any fraud. There you go. I'm right. getting to the bag legitimately no, and getting it. those hey, M's hey, the right way. But let me ask you a question. Do they allow you back into that game because? You know the game. I I know the, you know the I game, know, but know do they the allow game. you to go back? But you know they... what? They blocked me mm. for a period okay. from the game, but then I learned another game. And that's the thing about us is when you have a mind mm-hmm. and right. you work mm-hmm. your mind, you can be in this industry, that industry. That's it right. doesn't matter what industry you put me in. If I figure out the industry, I am going to rock. Black people industry. are the only group of people that are that, are that fluid. We're the mm. only people that are that versatile. We could be in the hood. We could be in Hollywood. We can that's make right. it happen anywhere. Right. All right, now Del Ronda, nope. let's get to you. Okay, let's go through everybody's crimes. <laughs> you from the D? You from the East Side? Del Ronda. I'm from the uh, East Side of Detroit. Yeah. Okay, and so let's get into your American Gangster episode mm-hmm. and what it is that uh, that you were doing as you was running with uh, BMF and everything. Well, that ain't the only crew I ran with. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I ran with a couple crew. I'm pretty good with dealing with men. Big you know? fifty. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the go-to girl. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, I also was a madam, you know. I did, um, I frauded the government. You know, me and a friend of mine frauded the government, you know, with income tax fraud. You know, I did a couple bits, you know. What, you well, what was what the income tax fraud? Income fraud? You was yeah. claiming people kids on your taxes? Like, uh, well, you I, I know, think a little more I, than well, that. I'm going to tell you this. I'm straight to the point. We would go to the hood, you know, um, to the projects, mm-hmm. and I would get girls that was, you know, didn't really have any money. And I would do taxes for them. Mm-hmm. They didn't have any job. I created jobs, you know, and we do taxes for them and give them a couple thousand dollars. And that wasn't a lot of money, but to them it was a lot of money. Right. Well, you don't you have call? it and you say they, here's 2500 well, That's a lot. What happened was um, I think I did maybe two, 300 people within three weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sheesh. And uh, I was doing 70000 a day. Okay. Did they ever That's try to barter it with you when well, you were like, Well, Here. someone got caught at Jackson Hewitt, you know, and uh, um, they told that me and an Armenian friend of mine had, uh, we were the ones that had, you know, honchos of running this scam. And um, they came, and one day I knew something was going on because I could see them sitting down the street from the house, and they would, my kid would say, you know, Mom, we're getting followed every morning when you take them to school, a yellow vet coming you know, is watching us. I'm like, oh boy, you're going crazy. So then I started paying attention and seeing it. So one day I was, they, they were sitting in front of the house. So I went and knocked on the bitch. Go ahead, speak freely, speak freely, speak freely. That's why I knocked on the bitch, the fed bitch window and said, you might as well come on the fuck in because I'm sick of you sitting around my house. That's right. So they came inside? So then she said, okay, I got you. The next day, they kicked in the fucking door and I grabbed my son, I said, to be very honest, I said, listen here, you don't talk to these white people because the motherfucker will jam us up. That's you right. You don't say shit. So he was like, okay, don't say nothing. I said, don't say anything. So uh, they came in, and uh, they, I was like, shit, I got to pee. She was like, <laughs> you got to pee? I said, take me to the bathroom. And then so she proceeded to take me to the bathroom. I said, bitch, I'm pissing on myself. Fuck it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's just, you know, now, you know, things has changed for mm-hmm. me. You know, I did a lot of things. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did a couple prison bits, you know. And me, I like the action. Right. You know, I like the action. What you mean you like the action? I, I, what, what I'm saying is the kind of action I like is getting away. And the feds <laughs> hates me. Right. They hates me. They like that fucking bitch throw these wild parties, these lavish parties, and then she gets away with everything. Because every time I get caught, I get a little bitty time. You know? What's the longest scratch you did? Like three years. Okay. You know, so it's like, you know, um, a friend of mine, uh, the Armenian friend of mine, she got killed. She got murdered. So I had to take her debt. So that's the way it was set up with the, the fraud, the income tax fraud. Mm-hmm. So I got her restitution, which that I uh, I don't have any money. Now you said that you would always. <laughs> <laughs> you said you would always plea out every time you got charged. Oh yeah, because see, take me, my now. thing is, you know, I go to my my lawyer. See, I don't like them play no fucking games with me. You know, I go to my lawyer. I say, listen here, you ain't not gonna finna get my goddamn money and tell me that you gonna work some deal with the uh, DA. Mm-hmm. Just tell me, read in your books, tell me what I'm looking at. Well, you know, if you do this, your guidelines is this. I said, listen here, call the prosecutor attorney, tell the bitch I'm pleading guilty 
and uh, you know, I can leave today if she want me to, and you don't have to go digging in, you know, shit and looking, you know, digging mm -hmm. in more shit. So she called back and said, she wants to plead now? So I said, yeah. She said, okay. Then she sent back and said, 30, 30 months. And I end up throwing bleach in a bitch and beating her in the head with a hammer. So the fed? They put, the fed agent? Uh, no. Oh, another, another woman. Bitch. And, uh, oh. They, uh, she, <laughs> she this story just jumped from one to the is all of this going to be on the show? Yeah, yes. you got you to gotta watch this show. You're giving them too much now. You yeah. got to watch this No, show. but you know what? I'm going to say with Joe Ryan. Yours started off with you talking about pulling a girl's eye out. Mm. Oh, yeah. I was a kid, like 12 or 13. Yeah, so you talk about that from a young out. age. Huh? This is a crazy story. Well, you know, we were young and east side. You know, we look poverty stricken and shit. So what you pull an eye out with? So, with a goddamn stick okay. and took it on a grandma. You took that eye for an eye uh, thing too literally, you huh? You know what? So you what know, did your grandmother say when you came home with this eyeball on the I stick? I had it behind my back and I, it was blood what, on the front of what me. What was you going to do with said, that? What was you doing with it? I don't know. I just wanted to take it home, you know? Because shit, I was scared about this Why time. did you do it? What was because, the reason? <laughs> because we were young and, um, you know, we had a little, we trust her with the little money that we make, you know, selling Kool-Aid and lemonade and stuff and you know we wanted to get some little gym shoes you know and when she came back with the gym shoes on and her little dress I said well bitch well you you know I had a bounce on me all the neighbors didn't want to take me anywhere so I'm like where you get that from with the money we raised well, I just went crazy so everybody got to pushing her around I just said let's end it I just picked up the stick and you know don't play with so, her money. You know. okay. Why so, you just ain't take her yeah. shoes? Yeah, well, <laughs> take her jacket. Like, take her jacket. <laughs> you take her but you know eye. what, though, Charlamagne, on some real shit, I'm remorseful for that because that mm -hmm. girl, and when I went to prison, you know, when we grow up and got older, she came to my grandmother's house looking for me because she has a glass eye. My parents are oh, million with broke. You know, she was a pretty girl, mm -hmm. light-skinned girl with green eyes, so she felt a little different, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She felt a little different, and she wanted to know why, you know, because she's on drugs, she lives in Indiana now, and she just wanted to know why, like, you know? You traumatized that poor girl. Yeah, wow. fucked up. Lord you have know, mercy. Sorry, Goodness though. gracious. Um, you know? All right. I'm, well, Aisha. <laughs> <laughs> Aisha, what's... What's your story? Uh, well, you didn't pull out nobody's eye, did you? No, I didn't pull out nobody's no eye. Tooth, no tooth, no fingernails? No, no, no. All no, right. No. Jeez. No. <laughs> so I went to prison. I was sentenced to 10 and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, I had a company, Apogee Financial, and um, we did the proof of funds for people that were getting involved in trading platforms, trading commodities. You know, diamond, gold, mm -hmm. um, oil, natural gas, things of that nature. I found an issue. People weren't qualifying. So even if they came in with the money, they had to have a net worth of 20 million, 50 million, 100 million, and a lot of people didn't have that net worth. So what I did was I started linking them with people who did have that net worth, hedge, hedge fund managers, mm -hmm. um, just people who had large amount of capital, and um, I would you know do like an acquisition. So I would put them with that client, and then they looked like they were worth the 100 million, the, mm. the 50 million, so now they could go in and spend their own money. Right. Because, you know, the money, the system is like a, a triangle. Mm -hmm. It's a very small space at the top. And if you're not in that bracket, you won't qualify for a lot of financial tra transactions that are on a very high scale, which obviously, you know, it pushes black and brown people out. Because right. it, even if you were to make a million dollars tomorrow, you wouldn't qualify. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to spend 100000 you have plenty of money, but they don't <laughs> let you in. Right. So... Initially, I was doing that while I was doing the mergers, but it takes some time. So eventually, some clients was like, I'm missing out on the trading platforms because it takes too long to do that. So I need it today. So obviously, if they need it the same day, I can't do it the proper way. So I was like, okay. There's like, I got 200 grand for you. I got 300 grand for you. So I was able to change the documents, put their names and the amounts I changed so that they could get into the trade. So I was basically guilty of forging documents. Mm -hmm. um, my company made about... Uh, $10 million uh, in a very short time, in, a, in less than a year, about 10 months. And I was eventually, you know, caught and sentenced to 10 and a half years. 10 and a half years. Why did you yeah. get so much time? <laughs> well, you know, in like drug cases, you know, your time is connected to the weight. Mm -hmm. So in white collar cases, your time is connected to the money. Mm -hmm. So had I done the same thing and not made any money, I probably wouldn't have gotten anywhere as much time. But what happened, I think really made them upset is when, when, when I first was approached by the feds, it was a civil case. And then they took all my money. So 
So I sat, you know, at the table, as you'll see on the show, with my team, and I'm like, we got to do something else. So I started buying the actual gold in Africa. So I was broke. I was down to nothing. Sent my guys to Africa, you know, in another six weeks, we were back in the millions again. You know, started buying gold. You buy a kilo of gold back then was 10, 11,000 from Sierra Leone, and I was flipping it right here in New York, you know. Um, so what's for, illegal about that? That wasn't illegal. Okay. But it made them mad because they took all my money and they wanted me to just be done. So now, they get back, mad. Yeah, they got They get upset. mad when you keep reinventing yeah, right, yourself right. and rolling so they out. They might be mad if you them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they might. But, you know, th the thing about wealth is that when you find a formula, you can apply it to anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter what you're buying, what you're selling, mm -hmm. what you're doing. If it's a service or a product, as long as you know the formula, whether it's real estate, whatever it is, if you know it, you can do it. So mm -hmm. they got upset because, you know, I guess they wanted to destroy me. You know, they wanted to feel like I was defeated because they mm -hmm. took all that money. You know, they seized like six and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. And, you know. You had six and a half million now? I had $10 million. Oh, you was balling, but, balling. You know, And I was only 24, 25 at the time. And, you know, my entire team was black. You know, Sal, Weezy, we all went, we all went to federal prison. I got the most time and then, you know, they got time right under me. But um, I think they were more upset that when they seized those funds that I was able to find something else to right. do. But so after, isn't that the so goal, though, to find something legitimate to do after you get caught doing something? Yeah, but I you would... know, you, 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 that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the actual part of it. But the emotional part, the, the racist part, mm -hmm. and the sexist part is that I'm a black female. You know, I'm working with people on Wall Street. I created this business model. You know, um, I didn't really know anybody else doing it like I was doing it. Mm -hmm. So here I come and I think I didn't look right. right. You know, I come in with a black team. We make millions of dollars every month. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think that they felt like I was out of my place. And when mm -hmm. I was sentenced, you know, I'm going to tell you something really crazy. I was on a bus going from um, court. They remanded me and I was going to MDC Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And while I'm on the bus going to MDC Brooklyn, the U.S. Marshals bus gets pulled over. I'm in the cage. I'm the only girl on the bus. It's all the men on there. And I'm in the cage and the bus gets pulled over. Like, who's pulling over the U.S. Marshal bus? Mm -hmm. It's the Secret Service. They pull over the bus, they get on the bus, and they ask for me. So now I'm shook. I'm like, I'm already going to, to right. prison. What do they want? So they come on the bus and they, they, they get me off to put me in the car with them. Still going to MDC just to talk shit. Like, oh, you just had to go to Africa. I didn't go personally, but they knew I sent my team. Oh, you know, you, you just had to go. You just couldn't sit down. That's why we charged you criminally. Mm. And you ain't the boss lady no more. I'll never forget wow. those, wow. those words. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. It was, you know... They, try, they probably tried to break your spirit and they yeah, probably tried to break you do. mentally because right. if you can do that, if you can build a business from the street and get $10 million, then have a wherewithal to go get gold from Africa and flip that, mm -hmm. you're a different type of person. Facts. You yeah, know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, that's how we linked, you know, me and Jamila linked because when we got to prison, it's like when you're a boss, it doesn't matter your circumstances. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what they do to you. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset. That's right. So when we got yeah, into prison, exactly. we was linked because she wrote books. I wrote books. I published 10 books. She published more than 10 books. And we linked. And then I wrote, I started getting back into my music, writing my music. And, you know, people just started recognizing us from the street. Yeah, you know? but we also noticed the discrepancies in our case as far as the time we got. Right. So, like, we got more time than any of the cats on Wall Street. So I got 12 and a half years, she got 10 and a half years, and we looked at our stories and the amount of money that we was able to make and the things we were doing, it was just, like, crazy right. to see the discrepancies. And on my sentence in Jay, the judge basically told me, how dare you? You know, go into Alpine mm -hmm. and Saddle River. Why you didn't go into East Orange and Newark? Whoa. So he basically yeah. made a distinction like, okay, so because you ain't playing the hood and you want to play in my area, this is what I'm going to do. And Chris Christie was my U.S. attorney. I told you guys that. Mm -hmm. And on my sentencing day, he said justice has been served in America because I got all the time and the white boys got none. How dare that you black crazy. people do white collar no, crimes? Y'all know better I mean, than that. All of us. You know, <laughs> that is crazy. As much as you look at crime, I learned that in prison. You know, it's not about the crime. A lot of people are intelligent, and intelligent people sometimes have a problem with waiting mm -hmm. because you can find faster ways to yeah. do things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of ways that people mm -hmm. are looked at as being criminal, they're not. They're just so smart. I don't even want to wait. All this red yeah, tape, I, I could do this faster. Or how can I get around this? It's not like you want to harm people. Right. It's just that you want to get it yeah, done. Yes. You know, and um, a lot sure about cuts. running the straight road is being patient. And yeah. that's what I'm still learning because I'm like, I'm out here, I'm just like, I'm ready to get to it, you know? But we, we, we doing the best that we can, 
But um, we are. It's a transition. We are. Right? You know yeah. Two years, we are. Yeah. All right, all right. Wait, Ayana, Ayana, Ayana's, Ayana's up next. What's yes. your Financial aid. Uh, so. <laughs> a high bar has been set, by the way, Ayana. Well, well, you got some good ones. Well, well no, no, no. I, I, I mean, I only know my lane and my bar, so. <laughs> That's, so that's, that's, all, nice. that's all I know. But um, my crime is I was a financial aid advisor. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have two different sentences that I had. So I committed the crime in two different ways. So the first time um, that I committed the crime, I don't know if you're saying that, but the first time that this happened to me, what I did was um, my position was that um, at a time where colleges and banks were trying to get you to refinance your fund, refinance your student loans, um, early, so basically, you lose your grace period, and you already start to begin to pay back your your student loans. So what the banks do is they send the funds to the school, so you get one big check to the school, and then you know now the the student is paying that particular bank. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I, um, in my position, I was supposed to deposit those funds, and I did, but I didn't deposit them to the school. So I kept those funds. Okay, those are the refund checks. Not the refund check. No, no, no. These are these are refinance. Re- refinance. Okay. Yes. So it was checks from the banks mm-hmm. that would come um, to to replenish the students. How much money? Oh uh, well, the first time they said uh, a quarter of a million dollars. The first time. That's what they so said. So that was a yeah. That was a lie. So that was the first. Well, I'm not going to say that it was a lie, but. <laughs> that's what, they said. And what about the second time? <laughs> the second time, um, I don't I don't really know the dollar amount. Probably like. Eighty something thousand. Um, that's and, and these cases are ten years apart. Right. How much did time you, did you get? Another. I'm sorry. How much time did you get? The um the first time I I got a light light term. So I I mean I didn't experience what these ladies experienced. I think that I really you know got a light sentence. My first time I did I was sentenced to six months and three years probation. Um, so that was my first. My then first you went time. back to it after getting six. Months. Ten years later. <laughs> <laughs> did you have to pay the money back though? Um, the first time I didn't have restitution, but the second time I did. Mm-hmm. Yes. So Did you think during that time while you were doing it that you would eventually get caught? You know, I think that when when you're doing something that you know is gonna, you you talk yourself into it's work. Like any time that I walk out of that ATM and and and, and it's, it's lit, then I'm like, okay, well it worked that time. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're not you know that something can happen, right? But you're not letting that stop you because you're on this roll and it it's working. So I think more so than if something's not gonna work and you feel it right away, then you're like, no, I'm not doing that no more. But you didn't get that feeling. I didn't get that feeling a lot of times. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Something in common, right, that a lot of you women have is that you have people that you could trust that you partnered up with. And that's a hard thing to find. So how do you find somebody when you're uh, engaging in these activities to say, okay, this is my partner. I could trust them. It's and, risk. Uh, it's risk. You don't know. Don't it's trust hard. nobody because yeah. everybody <laughs> jumped on the stand on me. So I yeah. forget them partners and forget crime. And mm-hmm. I think that's what the message is today. Yeah. Not to glorify what we've done, but to yeah. say that you could use your mind in a different way. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, you're always going to get caught. If you see her right. story, my story, the story, and nobody wants to live their life like that. Did yeah. anybody around y'all ever say... Okay, you you got to chill. This is not a good idea. Get in, get out. Uh, well, I didn't experience that because you know I, I it wasn't known to people around me what I was doing. Right. So I was the person talking to, to myself. You were keeping all the money to yourself. <laughs> I well, was talking. To, well, I didn't keep it to myself, but I used it to you know to help others and myself. Yes, what did I you did. do to help? Others? <laughs> well, I I mean I did a lot of different things. You know, like what I tried to do was I tried to get myself into the entertainment industry. So I created like different events in my city. Gotcha. Um, that you know, try to bring light to shine a light on the music industry in my town. You had a record um, label, right? I didn't have a record label. I don't know why they said that. I didn't oh. have a record label. I more <clears throat> so did um, management, mm-hmm. and then like res- you know, provide resources that could lead people to record labels. Okay. Well, as for me, I didn't trust anyone when it came to money. <laughs> so when me and my friends would sit there and we'd count the millions, we always rented a room upstairs, mm-hmm. and we'd drag the money upstairs. So we're not friends. And I'll sit there and tell them, bitch, we ain't friends until this money is all counted. And we do what we do. So <laughs> what kind of gun did you have? <laughs> what kind of gun did you money? have? Huh? What kind of pistol did you have? Oh, I had, I'm a gun token. Annie. There you go. <laughs> you know, I like them all. I like the you little like, I'm mini AK. from the east AK. side. <laughs> yeah. The little mini AK. <laughs> she did like the little mini more wet bottle. Little mini. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, so I didn't, I didn't call, you know, we, I didn't have friends in that game. In that drug game, we wasn't friends until everything was taken care of. Mm-hmm. Then we friends again. Did you, you ever know, get so, robbed at 50? Oh, I mean, I have. I'm going to put it like this. They tried. Okay. okay my well, kids, and we were mm-hmm. riding, and my kids noticed 
someone on the side of us in a black car. Your kids notice a lot, boy. You got you <laughs> trade your kids, boy. They notice <laughs> everything. You know, they they yeah. just they notice something. And when I pulled up, and you know, I had started going all the different routes because I'm saying, well, maybe I can throw these people off. Maybe they really not following us. Right. So when I did pull up, my son say, "Ma," he was like 13. He said, "That's that same car that was following." that was following us, looking at us, the four guys. They was creeping through the alley. I said, okay. You know, I had other people's children with me, so I gotta, you know, protect other people's children. So my kids never knew what I did. You know, I had a um, a special um, service picking them up mm -hmm. every morning, you know. They didn't know, oh, why we can't ride the bus? Why we can't ride the yellow bus? Because, you know, I just couldn't tell them that. Right. Mm -hmm. You just got someone picking you up and she knew the rules, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I put the kids in the house, I got my gun, went out looking for them, got around the corner. They sitting in front of the church, and I see them putting on hoodies. They gearing up. They ready. You know, they ready to roll. So I'm flicking my lights and screaming. I'm going crazy. Now my blood boiling, temperature going crazy. So they turns and fly down seven miles, and I flew with them, motherfucker. So I just start shooting at them, and they start shooting at me. And I was on the phone with my brothers. Like, hey, we got some problems right here. So my brother and them, you know, said, stay on them. I just stayed on them. And I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, the most tragic thing about this whole situation is when you take all of this beautiful black brilliance, if, if, if y'all would have had the same resources and opportunities that a lot of yeah. these white folks had, y'all would have been billionaires. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, heads of some Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, at, at, it's important when I talk about this to people, I always let it be known that you know, a lot of our great grandmothers, some grandmothers couldn't read, couldn't write. Yeah. We were so limited in having access to business. You know, our parents really pushed us, go to college, go to college. College is a business. You know, right now, J Jamila has a school for kids. You know, that you, you, you can't give, your time has value. So mm -hmm. every, right. there's nothing wrong with giving something in exchange for money, especially if you're helping people, but it's still a business. Yeah. And, you know, there is very limited, um, information to us about businesses we run through communities and nobody grows up and says i want to own a grocery store mm -hmm. I, the things that make a community function we don't really you know our parents just say go to college because so many years we weren't able to so they right. just want to get into something that we weren't able to do yes. but we were out of the banking system you know and that's important and we were out of the legal system so the two things that really control society media um you know um Banks, which is the most important thing, we we don't own any banks. We got mm -hmm. like one bank, the Carver Bank, I think. I don't know any other black oh, banks. One United. Uh, one United. United. But you know, the big major banks, because I was in trading, there's it's it's, it's no blacks are in yeah, that. And then in, you know, and like you said, with those with, with the black banks, they can't lend but but a certain amount of money. Right. right. You know what I mean? So right. if you want so to get ahead, ahead other back. than making, making But I feel like getting ahead now is what I'm doing now with Yandy Smith is my partner. So we're in these schools and we're empowering kids to become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And we're empowering adults and families to do the same thing. So right. giving them the information, helping them become vendors. So we have a partnership now with the city of Newark and we're working closely in a lot of the schools there. We're working in the community centers and giving people information that's life changing. Mm -hmm. You yes. know? And I feel like that's what is necessary. So it's about giving people the tools that they need to show them that you can get money and you can do it legitimately. Do it How long y'all been home? How long? You, two years. Two years. Yeah, two and a half for me. Cause y'all told me y'all locked up with Ada. I'm like, Ada was just locked up. Yes. When y'all yes. locked up with Ada. Yes. Wow. Ada. We, we actually lived in the same unit. We was like this. Really? You know, we lived in the same unit, and um, we used to put. I used to put on prison plays. So. What I is prison play? Oh, like, yeah. prison plays. Play, yeah. 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 Play. So, She's a know. screenwriter too. Dope right. ass screenwriter, by the way. Thank you. So I used to put on plays because, you know, it's different for women in prison. Women mm -hmm. have children. You know, the men go in, usually the woman is at home to take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. But for women, women are coming in. I was locked up with a girl. I'll never forget it. She... Turn the mic to you. So she yeah. got caught. Uh, if you get caught at LaGuardia or JFK with drugs, you're coming to MDC before anything else happens because it's federal. Mm -hmm. And she came in and she was um, pregnant. And she, um, she, she came to the United States because she was from Mexico, and she would have her kids in the United States and go right back to Mexico, have her kid. But she was the wife of a, of a cartel. And the last baby that she had, um, the feds were there waiting for her. So they, they took her. She had just had a C-section. She walked into the prison. She had the chain on her still. It was all bloody no. from the C-section. Oh, you know what I'm saying? They, they didn't care. They and, you know, it's different when you're laying in a unit and you hear women 
you know, that just gave birth, they were they were chained to the bed, giving yeah. birth, crying, you know, all night. And we all have to hear. We yeah. all crying too. You know, it's it's different for women, mm -hmm. and the men don't hold us down. So mm -hmm. you know, a lot of females were in there for being ride or die, and you go to the visiting mm -hmm. room for the men, yeah. and, and it's packed. There. Baby it's mamas, good. girlfriends, yeah. wives. Right. When the women go. It's nobody there. Your mom, your grandma, and if you're lucky, your dad. Mm -hmm. You know, but your man ain't there. Even if you was dating a stud, studs don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of times they start dating a stud <laughs> after the after the bed. The studs end up having mad girlfriends on a compound, and that's a whole nother story. But what she was saying was, we created stuff to have fun. Don't do that. Don't do that. I was, I was, I was gonna go there. Why you wanna do that? So don't do that. It ain't open. It ain't been out there. It ain't been out there. Been out there. Martha Stewart, and I think that was the most fun we had in that place. She was funny as hell. Really? <laughs> but creating programs is what I started from behind bars, and we did things to make the women happy. And Aisha did plays for the women that Ada was in. Mm -hmm. So we found ourselves doing different things to uplift our community. Ada, my homegirl from Mount Corner, what you said is true. Like, she was a smart girl her whole oh, life. She played, right. she went to college, she played basketball. She yeah. yeah, she had her own hookah spot. Like, her, mm -hmm. her own um, series of hookah spots. So yep. she had multiple mm -hmm. hookah yep. spots. And Aisha, what you wow. said is true also. A lot of times women end up getting more time than the men that they was ride or die for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah. end up being just mental. a die, not a ride. You know, mm -hmm. they not riding with you. You, no. you know, you're. I was in a situation where I was with somebody and then they didn't hold me down. And I was, you know, making sure that everything was good, making all of this money. It doesn't really matter. People have to have a certain substance about them. Mm -hmm. And you really don't know who loves you or cares about you until you get in a messed up situation. It's good when everything is good, when the money's coming yeah, in. Yeah, it's easy. But when the money is gone, you find out who, yeah, who and that's family, why I appreciate friends. prison. I yeah. found, you know, I have a different love for my family, my prison sisters. Shout out to, you know, me and Jamila, um, we were part of, we are part of the Pink Panther clique. Shout out to the Pink Panther clique. It was women that came together that, you know, um, were bosses and continued that mission outside of prison. Um, you know, we put books out, you know, go cop that, the Pink Panther clique book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just came together using our minds to show the world that just because you go down doesn't mean you can't yeah, get you up. Can't you can't let that break right. you down. Yeah. Now, now, Rhonda, you said you was locked up with Martha Stewart. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> and did you have her what cooking? Was, was she cooking doing? for the whole well, unit? You know, she was fighting. She, Martha was a gangster. Martha was a gangster. <laughs> she, Martha was fucking Bernie, Bernie ass up. Uh, <laughs> Bernie, Bernie was scared of Martha. Martha was scared of nobody in that motherfucker. Who's Bernie? This is this, this a D.C. bitch. You know, D.C. <laughs> 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 she used to fight Bernie? Yeah, no, nah, Bernie always wanted to kick her ass and she'd be, come on, bitch. You know, Martha, Martha, Martha what? and them big ass feet. <laughs> See, this is a story they tell. They tell that story. Hey, Martha and that big ass feet. Martha went playing. She was, I even Martha told her. Those big Did she ass ever feet. get in a fight? <laughs> Did Martha ever get in a fight? Well, Ma no, she didn't get in a fight, but she had an argument. She didn't give a mm -hmm. fuck. She was scared. You know what I'm saying? She asked a question, hey, what you in here for? Martha, what the fuck you in here for? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She won't write her book on us, bitch. We won't write one on you. Yeah. Do y'all keep in touch now? No, she didn't fuck with us. She fuck with her land ass. You know, I lied to her like, bitch, I'm going to be your bodyguard. You know, just give me a million. <laughs> Slap me something in my account, mm -hmm. you know. She was like, go get out of here. You know, I'm like, okay. So, Hernandez, who made a poncho, you know, she took who care of Who was Hernandez? You just talking a, like we was there with you. Hernandez <laughs> <laughs> is another broad that did a lot of time, and she was making all the ponchos and making everything for the people to send home to their children. Gotcha. And she kind of liked Hernandez, you know, like the way Hernandez moved, you know. So, Hernandez made her poncho to go home, and and Landis still had like 10 years left after Martha left. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, you know, took care of children and everything. Wow. She just took a wow. liking to Landis. She didn't fuck with our black ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important that um, when they're telling the stories that people don't come home with stories from prison. Like, it, it's nothing nice. So when I hear people talk about, oh, well, I'm doing X, Y, or Z, and it's a small sentence, oh, I didn't get that much time, it's like, well, do you realize that you may never make it home? You could you could not make it home That's after true. being right. there for five minutes. Right. You could also get in there and catch, catch another charge. case, That's and right. then you yeah, yeah. will not make it home. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely nothing to, there's nothing that any one of us did, I believe, that they feel that it was worth the time or you uh, that it took there. to take away. You you, once there, you're there, you're there. People. Definitely there's wasn't worth people. my 10 yeah. years. Right, and, everybody period. Telling, and everybody's telling. Yeah. I just want to address that. I, I have a real big problem with snitches. Like, yeah, right. you know, a real big problem. I feel like when you take a risk, you take that risk and you own that risk. Mm -hmm. All of this right now, this culture, I can't get with it. Mm -mm. I came home and I'm yeah. like, so you're not gonna write for Takashi because you're a writer. You're not gonna write for Takashi. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. And but what if people kind. are threatening your family? Like, let's say 
you're not cool anymore and then they threatening you and they're doing stuff to you I'm does not that telling. mean you still what if they tell like under no circumstances there's asking. a code though there's yeah. a code so like when you sign up for the code you gotta follow the code you can't switch the code no, in the middle real. of the game it's, it's like a contract that's if real. I have you sign a contract right if we're I'm in legal terms I'm not signing a contract from you <laughs> <laughs> you might want to sign one of my contracts you're right, you're now right, right, and, and, you and I might help you make a couple dollars here we go yeah, yeah, yeah. Queens yeah. represent alright Queens get the money if you sign a contract in a legitimate world you have to obey by the terms of the contract mm -hmm. so why you think in a street game you can switch the code up you that's can't right. switch that's the code like you know, it's, right. it's, it's, like it's crazy like these fuck boy ass but, niggas ain't doing no time I'm <laughs> well, they no telling on your ass bitches you and no, there's no consequences for snitches no more. Nah, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. But you know, you can't make your moves based on consequences. Your mm -hmm. moves have to come from principles. Mm. You know, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, I can't say, well, everybody's snitching now, so I'll snitch. I don't. I would right. never do that because right. it's just not me. I don't care what the culture is. And a lot of times, I get into debates with people, and they're like, oh, you too righteous. You, you know, that's not the culture anymore. I don't do it for a culture. I do yeah. it for me. You yeah. know, because I'm a stand-up person. I'm not telling on nobody. Well, well guess what? Yeah. I ain't happy. standing up no more, but I ain't committing no crimes. I ain't standing up for nobody because this shit don't, this all is bullshit. So Jamila T. Davis ain't committing no crimes. Don't come around me with none of that because I'm not standing up because they ain't standing up. So once you realize this is all bullshit, you be like, I'm good. You have to accept accountability. You have to be accountable Jamila for your actions. I, have, I, have, I talk about it in my music a lot. And that's why my music is so important to me because... I feel like right now as a female, I'm not naked. I'm not showing my butt, you know, and have my ass all out and all of that. I really, like, I rap rap. And I wanted to be able to do that because there's no lane. Everybody's just, you know, talking about fantasy life. This is real. I've been through real experiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Had real money. And I felt like it was important to bring that, you know, authenticity to, to, to music. Well, spit how, some. Spit some. Wait a minute. How did y'all feel, feel about Orange is the New Black Men? How did y'all feel about Orange is the New Black Men? I didn't even watch that show. But I, I, don't think I, I it, have my thing with it. It's definitely know. sensationalized, but it put us on a map because before Orange is the New Black, right. there Which was nobody really there? even talking about us. Right. So right. Right. I yeah. respect yeah. the fact that it opened up the lane for us. Yeah. But yeah, you know, Aisha got bars. Yeah, so she, she's a real writer. Let's hear something before you get up out of here. You want to hear something? Yes. I'm going to tell you something. I've never been more sold on a BET show, but you might ruin it if you're not hot. <laughs> <laughs> Ayana, you can manage her. Aisha, go ahead. Just a little song. Uh, Let me see. Um... I'm superhuman with it. I'm the source in it. Acting like you bought it cash when it's all rented. I don't get offended. I just go out and I spend it. My bank account six. Wait. Nah, seven digits. I'm cool and I'm rigid. Too legit to quit it. Admit it, my tailor. Keep me custom fitted. Mm. I'm feeling so good. Like I just got to quit it. The story's so big that Miller had to print it. Mm. Go oh. slow. It's been a minute. I'm still the boss. Handle my business. Don't interrupt me. Just wait till I finish. And since I was six, they said I was a genius. The light on me shining could never diminish. I'm going hard and let God be my witness. Looked in the mirror, see God in the image. I pray to myself. I guess I'm schizophrenic. Uh. We see who provided the entertainment when all is locked up. We appreciate you guys. Yeah, for joining tonight us. is my mixtape release party at Bar right. 13. So right. Right. Okay. let's not forget it. Right. And <laughs> listen, before you go, one last thing: Did you guys have counseling while you were in prison? Does counsel our damn self? No, everybody need no counseling because they put you on that bullshit. They always walk around looking like zombies. You know I did. Saying? I had some counseling. I, I went to the RDAP program, and people talk mm. about it, but it was like kind of you ran yeah. the RDAP program. There you go. She made the RDAP program her program but, <laughs> but I, I definitely enjoyed some of the <laughs> things we got but limited people get in yeah. there right. so it's very few resources available to prisoners all right well thank you I guys i'm oh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> i did not do counseling in prison but i did when i came home i was actually it was part of my sentence mm -hmm. so um i did and i and it probably was one of the best things that i ever did uh, i did it because i wanted to get a little time off <laughs> 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 but no, when I got in the program, the program was a good program, you know. The program was all right. You do learn some shit. You, you know? do learn some shit. And you yeah, do learn some shit. <laughs> Best way to put it. Some good shit. Y'all gotta watch the show. Y'all gotta watch the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can't skip man. Everybody was throwing okay. kikes on the door talking about my ass. So 50 went in front of somebody. <laughs> 50 did this. 50 got a bitch doing a homework. I'm like, God, damn. <laughs> 50, you can't give them too much. Now <laughs> we just gotta drop it. Y'all gotta watch the show. <laughs> I'm watching it. <laughs> T-Track Queens tuned in. Catch yeah. these episodes. Hold on. Shout out to my sis. Everybody give your social media too so people can hit y'all up okay. that's what's up yeah i'm big 50 313 and the real big 50 that's ig and anna nicole on facebook 
No, that's not. Um, I'm <laughs> at the real Aisha Hall, A I S H A Hall. That's on Instagram, Aisha Hall on Facebook, Aisha Hall YouTube, uh, on Amazon. Look for my books, Aisha Hall. It's easy to find me. It's your girl, Jamila T. Davis, and it's simple. It's Jamila T. Davis. That's J A M I L A T Davis. Hit me up, and it's going down. All right. Well, mine is Miss M S dot Y A N A. B E A N. So that's Miss Dot Yana Bean. And that's the best way on Instagram to get me on social media to follow the new things that I'm doing, advocating for formerly incarcerated women, um, book coming out soon, and hanging out with these ladies right here. Yeah, I also do a podcast. Okay. Yes. Vent Radio. I'm coming. I'm coming on. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I do a podcast, Vent Radio. You know, it's uh, Keeping It 100 with Big 50. It's on YouTube and it's running on Facebook. It's raw. I say what I want to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to check I that do, out. Um, you know, uh, at risk teams. I had some young ladies on there that was raped by the same man on Seven Mile. And, you know, he'll call in to the show. You know, what? so he calls in. I, I, I got three weeks of episode on him. He oh, calls wow. in like, hey, hey, tell that whole uh, she wanted it. I didn't do that to her. Oh, my God. And then, oh, you know, mercy. his grandma called in and cussed us out and told her, told me all I do is drink on the show. <laughs> y'all, 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 <laughs> he need to go to jail. Yeah, and the grandma said, well, <laughs> then she called back and said, well, you know, Mari, um, he raped them girls, but... You know, I seen him. He beat him up a couple times. So I they jumped out the window. Oh, no. I'm like, oh, well, no. you don't get it. He raped them. So you know, Kim Worthy, she haven't did anything about it. You know, I got into with uh, Malik Shabazz, tried to get in contact with him. Well, the whole thing that sums that up is, is so many rape kits in Michigan, 850 something rape kits been sitting that they haven't got to. Mm. So they probably won't get to these girls. Till they're about 50 or 60 years old. That's crazy. My cousin wow. of mine was raped 30 years ago. They just got him last year. So, wow. Damn. You know, too many rape kits in Michigan that we can't get, you know, mm-hmm. resolved. You know, I guess there's no money, you know. So, that's the, you know, I'm trying to help these girls. <laughs> you know, I said, shit, I was going to dress up and let Mari hit on me so I could beat his ass. Goodness <laughs> 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 Thank you, ladies, so much. Yes, thank you, thank you so much for having us. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.